Hello, welcome back to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Mel Nostalgic Runner, and we are back for another episode of the Real Housewives of Orange County. And this is season 18. And this is episode 18, and this is the reunion part one. And we find out at the top of the reunion that this is um the 100th um episode. No, the 100th um something i forgot it was 100 something of the franchises and we know that real housewives of orange county is what started everything so they actually hit a milestone um with this reunion episode so there's that um but what i will say about the reunion um it was an okay reunion it just wasn't great in my opinion and a huge part of it is we need a new host I'm sorry, I don't like, um, Andy does a decent job, but not a great job. Um, and it really, there's two, there's two things that he's not do, doing so great at for me when it came to this reunion. Um, I, when it comes to Tamara, he's handling her with kid gloves as if she's not the bully of the show. And also too, when it comes to Jen, like, she had some clapbacks during the first part of the reunion, but they were brushed over. Like they were not, they didn't stick. And I kind of blame it on Andy for not letting things breathe. Like if, if things would have breathed a little bit more and things weren't as rushed, um, I think the clapbacks will land it a little bit better when it came to Jen. Cause Jen definitely is in her new era of having a voice but we'll get to that. There's a reason why I think this, particularly with the clapbacks, it didn't land as well because it, you know, it wasn't really her defending herself all the way. It was more or less her defending Brian. And we know how that is. But anyway, we'll get to that and we'll go from there. So the reunion starts with the whole pleasantries where he goes one by one asking how everyone's doing and you know, like, and, you know, doing the, the pleasantries of it all. And then um, from there, once he does the pleasantries, then um, he does ask, you know, hey, can we set an intention for this reunion? Like they do for every reunions, because reunions are known for talking about the issues, hashing it out so we can start all over again with a new season and new, potentially new issues, or if it isn't hashed out of the reunion, it carries over to the following season. And um, that's, you know, I think what he was doing here. And it started with Tamara and her intentions. And <laughs> what I found it so funny when it comes to Tamara is if you didn't know already that Tamara's pretty narcissistic, this was telling. Um, this reunion did not help her. It did not. Um, even though she wasn't doing her loud, um, vulgar self that she has in the past, even her silence and her smirks and even her trying to kind of rebrand herself on the fly, because I feel like that's all this is, um, it's not landing because it's obvious to anyone with eyes as not genuine. And um, also, too, I think what is helping it be obvious is that Shannon and Jen are pretty much standing on business on it. So I, I love that. <laughs> and then Gina, you know, being the unlikely ally of both of them, because I don't think we saw that coming at the beginning of the season that Gina was going to take the side of Shannon, considering how Shannon treated her horribly when it came to her DUI situation years ago. Um, but now that the tables is turned, you know, she's, she took the high road and it's actually paying off. <laughs> so there's that. So the first major thing that they talk about, they get right into it. They don't waste any time. They talk about Shannon's DUI situation and, um, all the ladies for the most part, um, with the exception of Heather, but Heather, what didn't have as strong of a stance as she did towards the end of the season. We're kind of, we're pretty much on Shannon's side. I'm like, I think she's changed. I think she's doing better. And Shannon, if at this reunion, she showed up and showed out. Really, she was kind of the only one on that side of the couch um, that 
stood on business and kind of, I mean, if there was a winner, Shannon definitely came on, came off on top when it came to her versus Tamara in this first part of the reunion. Tamara kept trying to speak softly and say, no, you were still drinking. You're still drinking. And Shannon straight up says, we have not been friends for years like yeah we were friends on camera and then she's like yeah i've called you every single day is what tamra's saying and, Tam and and shannon's like you left for scotland like right after all that happened there was no possible way you would have called every day and then she's like oh no no when i got back which also there you go that means you did not call her every day and shannon's like you don't know my life you are not we're not that close for real for real and i think that was very important to know and we kind of knew that's what it was. We knew that Shannon ain't really that close to Tamara anymore. And it was even clear in the, the season before that they weren't cool anymore. They tried to patch things up for the sake of the Trace Amigas of it all. But other than that, you knew that wasn't what it was. And I think most viewers knew that. And so Shannon kind of standing on business with that she was able to defend herself like it was nothing like and tamra really didn't have much to say and because tamra now you know has gotten so much backlash from yelling and all that stuff she's not doing that either so she kind of was just sitting there on stupid kind of for the most part when it came to this reunion um the other thing is i think tamra was not expecting for even emily to step in and say hey you're doing too much with this and um when andy said yeah i think you owe i think an apology is owed and tamra and her delusional self thinks she's owed the apology and it's like no <laughs> and even andy quickly correct her is like no, no 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 it's the other way around and everyone was like and everyone's like yeah it's the other way around you owe shannon an apology and she couldn't even do that it was the non-apology apology she kept trying to do and i am so proud of shannon and even though i mean shannon has her flaws she's not perfect but i am so proud of her for being like for basically stating i'm not accepting your not apology and then eventually to move things along when it came to reunion she did ex like tam was forced to actually truly apologize we know she didn't mean it and shannon was like okay i'll accept your apology but we're never gonna be friends ever again i was like woo. And so that cord has been cut. And I think, I really, really hope Shannon, with this energy that she has for Tamara, I think she needs to basically use that energy when it comes to everyone. Because it's very clear to me, just from watching the show, that Shannon has a history of just being around too many toxic people and it's killing her, like literally. And I think she just needs to cut that cord across the board and, you know, get through things and actually deal with things. And to me, it sounds like Shannon really is doing the work and she looks amazing. So I really do feel that that's a thing. And I think all the, and all the other ladies can attest to, no, no, no. I think she really is, you know, doing better. The only person that was kind of on mute when it came to a lot of it was, um, Heather. Um, uh, but Heather did kind of backtrack some of her thoughts. Um, and I know why, because Tamara got, has gotten eaten up. And so you can't stand behind Tamara anymore either. Um, so there's that. Child, I almost forgot again. The um, issues between Shannon and Heather did, did briefly come up um, during this part one of the reunion. And they actually did um, talk about it, discuss it. Um, she, um, Heather did apologize and Heather did clean up the reason why she thought it was okay to talk about it. Now, whether you want to believe her or not, she's still using that, um, Jeff Lewis interview as part of it, but the way she explained it, it actually made more sense than I originally thought and the way it aired on the show. So it kind of is left to your interpretation of, oh, okay, I get where Heather's coming from. But still, at the end of the day, if she said for you to not say anything about things, you still should have like stood on that and not said anything. Whether Shannon repeated it out loud or not, that was not your story or your um, issues or really, it wasn't your injuries and stuff to like talk about or tell. So... 
Um, but it did change my opinion on it slightly, but not really. Side note, I forgot to mention this at the very beginning. The reunion that I'm doing um, the review on is not the Peacock Uncensored version. So if there are parts that are missing, um, I think moving forward, part two and three, I will do the Peacock version. But I just wanted to watch reunion get over with and do my review. So just to let you know. Oh, the other thing was at the very beginning, when they were doing the pleasantries and they were talking about the intentions, Andy made a point to mention that Tamara started therapy. And it says saying, yes, I've started therapy and working on myself. She's all like, thank you. Like to me, that was a little thing that was extremely telling to me that she was glad that Andy mentioned that she's doing therapy. It wasn't about her being glad. It, 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 that was a weird reaction for that to be mentioned. It, it does let me know. If you didn't already know, it's kind of obvious Tamara is truly has a lot of narcissistic characteristics. I'm not going to say she's a narcissist because I don't know her. I don't know any of these people in real life. But the, the signs are pointing to it. So there's that. Okay, from there... We then talk about, once we get past the Shannon situation, we then talk about um, Katie and her first time on the show. Um, so one thing that was mentioned was her going to see her mom. That still has not happened yet as of this reunion happening because um, apparently her dad, I believe, passed away. So that kind of put a damper on it. So they had to push everything back and... Um, so that didn't happen. Um, but then right away they went into the situation when it came to pretty much all of like Katie stuff. I think Katie, after this part of the reunion, she's kind of going to fade to black for the most part. Um, because Katie got exposed badly at this reunion. It, when, when, if I say if there was a loser in this reunion, Katie was a clear loser. Like she got and not lose her in a way where, like, she's a, you know, a dirtbag or anything. I don't mean that. I mean, like, she got eaten alive. And she had no good rebuttals for it. Because she kind of got gained up on to a certain extent. And the only person that kind of had her back was Jen. But Jen didn't have enough for her to really save her. Because a, what it boiled down to when it comes to Katie and her situation with both Heather um gina and then we know if gina's involved that means emily's gonna chime in because she can't help herself because truthfully okay that's the other thing <laughs> before we get into this part emily girl find your own business you don't have your own business like this if you didn't notice during the season that this was obvious it was clear as day during this reunion emily truly has nothing going on she has nothing going on. She's literally in everyone else's business. She's over chiming. Um, honestly, I feel like if she's kind of taking the place of Tamara when it comes to reunion, because reu because Tamara was on mute for the rest of the reunion, because she she literally got neutered. Um, <laughs> I feel like the the public backlash and everything prior to the reunion, and even still. She got neutered. So Tamara was on mute once she was no longer talked to. That's kind of what happened here. But then everyone else, though, but then um, really it just came off as like Emily, Emily needs to find something to do. I, and it was just kind of annoying. Um, but at least, and so when it came to this stuff, um, and she's taking the fact that she's an attorney way too serious. Like, it's like, girl, are you, but you're not a practicing attorney. So I would just like go on mute, like stop it. Um, and so anyway, um, back to the Katie situation. So the main thing that Katie was getting attacked for by Gina, Heather, and Emily, um, uh, Shannon tried to like give her some grace, but that still didn't work either was, and this is, and I agree. I, I'm not really disagreeing with this. Katie has a huge credibility issue. Um, so the... And I didn't explain this in my reviews, but I knew this happened because I follow Bravo News outside the reviews. But when I give my reviews of the show, I try to stick to the show. And then if it men gets mentioned outside the show or during the reunion, then I bring it back up. 
So the incident when it came to her road rage thing that happened in Atlanta, um, where she asked, she got someone locked up um, with kids in the car and all that, that came up. Um, and there's two sides of the story. The police are saying that she was the, actually the antagonizer where Katie's still stating that she was not the antagonizer. But then we also find out Katie was homeless during this time. And then it had to do a lot with her ex-husband. And Katie was just flustered and just like not doing well when it came to any of this stuff. And then also her business that she has, because um, she has a side business, it was not aired on the show at all, but they showed that they did film it. It just wasn't aired. And I'm wondering if this is why. So she has a side hustle where she was um, um, basically made um, golf ball shots. So the shots are in the form of a golf ball for when you're playing golf. Cause you know, her and her husband, they like their, you know, golf channel, like that's like their deal. Like they're, that's the thing when it comes to both of them. <coughs> Sorry about that. And, um, so, um, yeah, apparently she's getting sued cause that was not an original idea. And her reasoning behind it when explaining this is that the business partner that came to her with the idea is the one who actually did not have the original idea, not her. And so what they're calling her out for is there's always an excuse when it comes to all the things. Um, so it's not just the one thing, it, like it goes from the paparazzi thing to the kid thing to all these other things that gets brought up and so she has nothing and then also Emily takes an, an extra step and they talk about her and her other son that she didn't have for a while which side note now she does have that son the one who ended up staying with the ex-husband that gets brought up and so that makes Katie then having to open up to the world and basically state like she was not in a good place she was homeless and she had to basically give up custody temporarily when it came to um, these things. Um, so it's a lot. So I'm I'm a little concerned and a little worried that um, I'm a little concerned and a little worried that um, yeah, this I don't know. This is going to be a one and done when it comes to Katie. Um, because that was a lot that she just found out that like, okay, so you're going to then, um, you know, air out all this other stuff when it comes to my children, my ex-husband. And so she was pretty hysterical at this time because she just starts breaking down and crying. And then they go to commercial break and right around the commercial break, we see that Heather came to her and actually apologized to, um, Katie about everything that's going on with how she kind of got destroyed because she got destroyed there was no <laughs> she got destroyed and heather was like look of all the things i was not gonna bring up your kids because that's team too much and i'm sorry that that got brought up i'm sorry like and they hugged they hugged it out now i don't know if it's going to come up later on can they build something up again but like I don't know because they don't really trust her. I think that's the issue. So we'll see what happens from there. Okay. So last but not least, when came to this first part of the reunion was all about Jen and Ryan and the lawsuit. Um, and Jen, Jen, Jen. Ugh. I think Jen came out okay, but she knew she was going to get eaten up. This was one of the, this was one of these things where Jen was not going to win this. It just was. It, it's very clear Jen was not going to win this, like because Ryan and his character is very sketchy. Like there's there's the way he moves and stuff is extremely sketchy, and even the fact that he's joking with the guy who got in trouble who's her, his best friend and him getting that immunity. It, it, it's not, it wasn't going to work. 
Now, what damaged Jen when it came to all this was Jen stood on business where she didn't get destroyed like um, Katie did. So she didn't get destroyed, but she just wasn't going to win this. Um, so she, the way she came out, it was the best. To me, it was the best way she was going to come out. Um, because when she did have the clapbacks, this is where I mentioned before, Andy did not give it time to breathe when it comes to the clapbacks and didn't like catch them and like kind of reiterate them. Because if Andy would have caught the clapbacks that Jen was stating to Emily at this moment, this would have been the time to do it. And it would have like kind of helped Jen out. Um, but because we just swept the clapbacks under the rug, it didn't land, um, which I'm, I'm annoyed by. Um, <laughs> honestly, as a viewer, I was kind of annoyed. Um, because what was getting me about this whole entire segment, Emily was acting like this is her man. Like Emily was basically being Tamara in this situation. She was kind of being Tamara's mouthpiece. Now, I do appreciate Emily breaking things down when it comes to all this because Emily was coming from a place of truth. And I hate to call a thing a thing, but she was coming from a place of truth because she was, you know, translating what this all this stuff actually means legally. Similar to what she even did when it comes to the Katie situation. She was breaking things out down for us viewers to understand what this means legally. So we understood what all this meant. Because Jen was just trying to brush it off as like, no, that's not that. That's not that. And we know, unfortunately, we know that that's not really true either. Like, two things can be true. I love Jen. I love that Jen has found happiness. But could, do I wish Jen find happiness, happiness with someone who character wasn't as questionable as Ryan's? Absolutely. Do I wish Jen find her own sense of independence? Absolutely. But what I have a problem with when it comes to Emily and how she treats Jen is that she makes it seem like she's talking to Ryan. Like she just has so much visceral and hatred. It comes off like that on my screen when it comes to that. Because she doesn't like... I, I it, it, it really... Green is not Emily's color. She just seems so jealous. And I mean horribly jealous of her. And it's unhealthy. <laughs> it's very unhealthy version of jealousy to me. How I'm seeing it. And you don't have the reason to be jealous of her. Like find your own life find your own business that's kind of what i meant when it comes to emily this whole reunion i was like girl if you don't find your own business like why are you in mine like that was that would have been how i would shut her up like but jen ain't got that in her all the way but jen did clap back she's like you know you're questioning all this stuff about this 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 and this in the media i don't do that to you i don't talk about how you live off of shane's shane's parents money I don't talk about that. And that was the dinger that should have, that should have landed. And it didn't because of Andy not being the greatest host, like trying to just rush things along. And so that was what I was kind of irritated by because that was a good clap back. I was like, yes, Jen, but like it didn't land. And then even like, I think um, Jen even had another clap back that was similar to that. And it kind of got brushed along. And I'm just like, oh my gosh. What is this? And um, besides Jen having her back, I mean, even even like I would say this, um, Shannon even came in there and tried to help Jen out when it came to all this this whole entire situation because Shannon was asking a legitimate question. I was even wondering this too. This immunity that Ryan has, is it like full on immunity like forever? Because if it's not, should they really be talking about this the way they're talking about this on the reunion? And that kind of got brushed over too, as if like that wasn't a, an, a valid question. And I'm just like, uh, Shannon, <laughs> that you're on point with. And no one like even mentioned it. They just kept talking. I'm like, oh my gosh. And this whole entire time, Tamara has this ugly smirk. And Jen called her out. She's like, what are you smirking about? And she's like, nothing, nothing. <laughs> like, Tamara didn't want any smoke. Because she knew she was going to get eaten up. Because I think Jen 
what I see here with this first part of the reunion and Jen's going to need to regroup in the break and stuff like that. Jen was ready for Tamara. I don't think she was ready for Emily. Um, and I think Tamara got in Emily's ears. Like, look, it's clear that I'm not going to be able to attack her. I'm going to need you to do my work. That's how it's coming off to me when I watch that. That's literally what I'm seeing. Because even at the very beginning, when they were doing the pleasantries and they're setting intentions, Jen was on point with this. She's like, I want to know what your problem is with me, Emily. And Emily gets super defensive. She's like, I have no problem with you. Like, you're just very this, that. Like, she, she doesn't take any accountability to how she acts towards Jen at all. And it's like, girl, we can all see you are so bothered by Jen. Like, even when you said the stand by your man thing at the very end, when you were trying to eat her up, like that came from your gut and it came from like a sense of like hatred for this woman. And it's just like, she did nothing to you at the end of the day. What's going on between her and Ryan really has nothing to do with you. So why do you care? Like, it's not like, is, is Jen spending money on you? Like I get like, it just, I don't know. It's just kind of crazy for me. But anyway, um, that is where things end when it comes to reunion part one. Um, yeah, I am interested to see how part two and three lands. I'm kind of even sure what will happen in part three. Cause I'm just kind of like, okay, we kind of talked about the two major story beats, which is Jen and, um, Shannon already. Um, I don't, but we didn't really talk about Jen and her um, financial situation. We only really talked about the last part of things. Um, so I guess there could be more that should be that could be talked about in part three. But I am curious how part three is going to work. I'm trying to think that I think that I miss anything else because, like, I actually did just enjoy watching the reunion. I did not um, take any notes. I just watched it and just enjoyed it. Um, I'm trying to think. Was there anything else pretty notable happening? Oh, when they were going back and forth, Jen and like um, Emily were going back and forth. Gina did chime in a couple times, but, and I, that was the other thing that kind of got ignored and I didn't like that. Gina was chiming in in place of caring for Jen. And I could tell Gina and Jen now are cool. Like it's kind of obvious they're cool now. And I just, I don't know. I hope. Gina can be the mediator between um, Jen and Emily because this one-sided beef is wild to me. I don't understand why Emily has this one-sided beef with her because it definitely does come off as beef. Um, I don't know. She just didn't do her homework to watch back to see why she acts a certain way. But it's like the way Emily was acting towards uh, Heather in the past, now she's acting like that's towards Jen. Oh, side note. Um, this reunion probably, um, especially when it comes to the Katie conflict, I think, um, yeah, people who are Heather fans are going to be happy for her because she she redeemed herself when it came to this first part of the reunion. She definitely redeemed herself. Like, she recovered. Like, yeah, that second half of the season, the last three or four episodes you're like girl what are you doing especially with this alliance with Tamara I think she she redeemed herself at this moment um other than that Gina wasn't really a focus point for this first part of the reunion um and then Tamara was on mute um yeah that's pretty much it um that does conclude the video. Um, please like, comment, subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. I will see you next time. Bye.